Good day everyone. Now we are on the part 2 of our police intelligence and uh, secret services. So this is the second scope of our topic that we have mentioned on the part 1 of police intelligence and secret services. This second scope uh, tells us about the intelligence agencies of selected countries. Well, we are going to talk about its concepts and composition. So, we have only uh, selected countries in terms of intelligence agencies that have a big contribution in the history of intelligence. So, what are we waiting for? Let's proceed with our uh, presentation. Okay, our next topic will be all about intelligence agencies of different countries. And we are going to discuss the concepts and its composition. To start with, we have here the first British intelligence. Uh, British intelligence or the Great Britain country for that matter is always rivaled with uh, Germany. The country of Germany way back during the World War I. Uh, the greatest achievement of the British intelligence is that was the delay in the use of uh, German V-BAM. So the operation was conducted with the OSS or simply means Office of Strategic Service and through penetration and technical intelligence, they discovered Pene Monde, the veto guided missile research project of Nazi Germany. So with all of this information that they have gathered, they somehow in innovated or even invented a particular machine in order really to get uh, uh, to get the target area or to get the shall we say the codes that they are going to to be given to their troops to which part of the British or Great Britain country that they are going to bomb. So later on, we would know what that particular machine that they have discovered or invented. So the British intelligence succeeded greatly by means of censorship. So when we say by means of censorship, uh, it is in the form of or process of knowing, detecting, decoding, deciphering uh, processes of the codes uh, that they have gathered or even get from the uh, Germany or the Nazi Germany and its codrom combined with skillful use of covert agents. Codrom. Uh, codrom is very crucial during their time, during the World War I time uh, when the Germany and the Great Britain has a battle during this time so the code room or the room 40, uh, 40 also known as 40 old building so literally it has named in id or national intelligence department 25 so it was the section in the british admiralty most identified with the british crypto analysis effort during the first world war so crypto analysis or crypto uh, cryptography analysis uh, building so it was in the name of Alan Turing. So Alan Turing was one or was the one who invented this what we call Turing machine. So as to the history of the computers, the Turing machine was actually first invented by him. That is the reason why uh, Charles Babbage or some of the personalities in the invention of the computers have their hard time or hardships in determining the missing link of the computer for them to create the new one because the Alan Turing or this Alan Turing machine or the Turing machine that was created by Alan has been uh, has not been exposed that is for the sole purpose of security of their nation not to be detected or identified by the Germany that 
they have this machine that in combatant with the Enigma machine of the Germany. Because the Enigma machine of the Germany is a machine wherein cannot be identified as to its nature and its functions that could be used by them in the art of war. But uh, due to the uh, fact that Alan Turing applied for the uh, military camp or military organization of the Great Britain, uh, he actually developed his invention with this machine in order really to uh, encrypt it in order to encrypt the the uh, the coded text or coded information that they have gathered from the uh, Germany. So so way back 2013, it was Queen Elizabeth who awarded this machine with a Nobel, Nobel Prize. So due to the fact that after or more than 50 years, more than 50 years, bago pa lang siya na ipalabas no 2013 uh, as part of the leasing, uh, missing link of the computer. Bakit hindi nila inilabas pagkatapos ng World War II? They don't even expose this right after the World War I and even right after the World War II just because they are anticipating the occurrence of the World War III. But since there, are, there is no threat anymore of the possible uh, outrage or the possible uh, sprout of the World War III, they already decided that they are going to expose it pub publicly worldwide the creation of Alan Turing, which, which is the Turing machine. So this is the crypto analysis machine made by Alan Turing this during that time. Well, actually, uh, for the record or for the history, Alan Turing was found out as a uh, homosexual or a gay. So that is why uh, he committed suicide by means of injecting a poison on an apple wherein he ate an apple before his execution because he don't want really to be executed. That is why he decided to put a, po a poison on an apple and eat it. So that is the cause of his death, not execution, but through poisoning himself. So that was the history of the British Intelligence Crypto Analysis Machine. So uh, British Intelligence System, they created the following British Military Intelligence. So it is divided into 20 different departments in order to consolidate all the informations in order to aid their operation as well in terms of battle. They also have this MI5 and MI6 stands for Military Intelligence Section 5 and Military Intelligence Section 6. The Military Intelligence Section 5 devoted to counter espionage and security. So meaning to say, the MI5 is more on internal security. Pag sinabing internal security, they are more on uh, local. They are more on uh, the main area internally on a particular uh, state or nation or particular place. So they are more on having the counter espionage and security measure internal uh, internal aspects or perspective in the nation well the mi6 or the military intelligence section 6 also known as box 850 or box 850 so this is known to be the british secret intelligence under the time of george mansfield smith coming as the first director the mi6 considered to be external since it secures the boundary and all the borders of a particular state and or country. So known to be the Military Intelligence Section 6. By the way, for, uh, for the record, MI5 is equivalent to uh, uh, FBI of the US and the MI6 is equivalent to CIA of the US. Why is that? The MI5 function internally on a particular state and the FBI of the United States function internally or throughout the federal states of the United States. Well, the MI6 
function externally on a particular state on borders, boundary, seaports, airports, mm -hmm. and whatsoever. And like the CIA, the CIA could actually conduct an investigation outside for the purpose of gathering data and or information. Uh, later on, we would know the nature of the enforcing or the policing of the uh, FBI and the CIA. Next is the special branch of Scotland Yard. So it is charged with guarding the royal family and important British officials and visiting foreign dignitaries. So meaning to say this particular uh, group or the special branch of Scotland Yard, they are only responsible for the welfare and or the security of those people who possess high ranks and or position, mostly those belong or a member of the royal family and also they have the SIS or the secret intelligence service so another thing for the MI5 or military intelligence section 6 this is the United Kingdom's domestic counter intelligence and security agency so be reminded domestic so meaning to say internal yung function yeah. and is part of in its intelligence machinery alongside the secret intelligence service or the mi6 the government communications headquarters this is more on a communication company and the defense intelligence so the service is directed to protect the british parliamentary democracy and economic interests and counter terrorism and espionage within the united kingdom so within the United Kingdom, it does not go forth with the boundary and or the uh, borders of the United Kingdom and or the Great Britain. So MI6 is for external, that is uh, military intelligence section 6 for borders and boundaries, while the MI5 is for domestic counterintelligence. So next, intelligence agency, of course, in Germany. So German intelligence has been feared enough by the Great Britain due to the facts of their contribution with the Enigma machine during the World War I. So German intelligence started war with the world's best organized military service through advanced separation of intelligence accompanied by troop movements. So meaning to say, uh intelligence has nothing to do without being accompanied by the troop movement so it would be the person or the people or an agent who would carry out the product of the information as what we call the intelligence so the german intelligence was weakened by the attitude of the officer group wherein they subordinated intelligence to operation and did not regard intelligence as assignment worthy of a soldier. So just because of the attitude of the officer group, they somehow uh, lose along the way in terms of giving importance as to German intelligence work. And they don't even give their operation or subordinated intelligence to operation, did not regard intelligence assignment worthy of a soldier. So this somehow uh, curtailed in terms of the number of people and our personnel who carry out the intelligence assignment and our operation since it does not give credit uh, soldiers to carry out such a ass assignment so during the time of the German intelligence of the Germany they created or organized this what we they called Red Gestapo so this is organized by the East Germany to combat the covert activities of the West Germany Germany group. So as for the record, uh, the Germany actually divided into two regions. That is the West Germany and of course the North Germany. So when it was still divided by the Berlin Walls. So it was been divided during the time of Adolf Hitler because Adolf Hitler is the one who organized the northern part of the Germany 
and they wanted really to roll over as well the western part of the Germany group. Next, we have the Japan intelligence. Though the Japan intelligence or the Japanese uh, participated in a short while or during the World War II, but later on, uh, uh, they are not that offensive anymore. So they failed because it was not provided with sufficient number of trained personnel so to assemble and evaluate the mass of materials. So meaning to say, yes, they have the number of personnel but due to the fact and trained yung mga personnel still insufficient yung uh, outcome ng work nila and which are collected although Japanese intelligence was involved in a short war and defensive in nature so as you can see during the world war II as they engage the war of course they have won some battles uh, so they even penetrated our very own motherland which is the philippines during the world war ii we back 1942 when they penetrated the philippines but due to the fact of uh, insufficiency as to the number of the trained personnel uh, for the purpose of evaluation of the mass materials that they have gathered they are unable to sustain it and uh, intelligence perspective for that matter is slowly bugging down so now we are down to u.s three branches of intelligence so alam naman natin yung united states is composed of different states with different structure of the intelligence agencies and later on we would know what are those uh, centralized form of intelligence agencies of the united states uh, first branch of the United States branch says branches of intelligence is positive branch the second negative branch and the third geographic branch so if you happen to remember uh, the spice of uh, I mean during the time of Napoleon Bonaparte he created two bureaus which is the Bureau of Intelligence and Topographic Bureau. Now we're in, uh, we could see here the same structure of uh, branches in the US intelligence for the positive that is equivalent to Intelligence Bureau of Napoleon Bonaparte and the geographic branch is equivalent to the uh, Topographic Bureau of Napoleon Bonaparte. First, let's tackle up about the positive branch. So, the positive branch function of collecting, evaluating, and disseminating intelligence. So, meaning to say, they are, this particular branch is responsible for the collection of information. Right after collecting it, it will be subjected to evaluation and analysis. Right after the evaluation and analysis process, it must underwent into dissemination. So now, the intelligence will be disseminated to the concerned agency, department, and or unit for the usage. So, and of course, this branch prepares situation, estimate, and translate documents. Pag sinabing translate document, that is now giving of uh, giving of the meaning so yun yung sinasabi nating uh, the definition or the right after the evaluation uh, that is the giving of the meaning of the documents being uh, evaluated the second one is the negative branch the negative branch if you happen to remember the concept of the counterintelligence Okay, so the negative branch of the U.S. branch of intelligence is more on counterintelligence functions. Pag sinabing counterintelligence, they are more engaged on the actual operation. Okay? First, investigate disloyalty and sedition. So this might be involving different personalities in the political arena. Investigate grafts and fraud in the organization. So, yun yung negative branch. So, particularly, it does not only uh, limit to a certain or a certain 
organization of the government on a particular state of the U.S., but it really tackles mostly of the state of the United States. The third one is the geographic branch. When we say geographic, the term itself, geo means earth, and graphic, that is an image or the photo. So geographic branch, responsible for produces maps, photographs, and terrain studies. Meaning to say, with all the information that had been gathered by the positive branch, as well, it will be corroborated with the geographic branch. How important is the geographic branch? Geographic branch is very important since it will identify the particular place of the possible friendly forces and the enemy forces. And this is also for the purpose of studying the terrain. That is for the familiarity of the place. Now we're in the agent or even the troops would have gone to engage in the OP region. So we have here another question. It is the official secret police agency of the Soviet Union in charge of the state security or commission of state security. What would be your answer? The answer would be FSB. So FSB was named KGB before or Komijia blah 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 blah. So ikaw na yung Mamaya na yung definition niya kasi andun yun sa next slide. So, FSB or FSS stands for Federal Security Service. Let's proceed. Soviet Intelligence System. So, the Soviet Counterintelligence, so-called Iron Curtain. So, Iron Curtain does not literally represent with the curtain that we have here in our room or the curtain that we have in our house that being hung on the window or even on the door but it is a curtain or iron curtain an imaginary curtain which no one may cross the borders of ussr without being detected all information are rigidly controlled so meaning to say yung iron curtain is just an imaginary curtain and or boundary in the presence of the armed personnel or in the presence of the armed people. So no one will cross the borders of the USSR or the Russia without being detected. So meaning to say you cannot pass through the borders of the Russia without bringing with you the pertinent papers for you enter the states. Its contribution to modern intelligence was the dissemination of false information designed to mislead and confuse opponents and prospective victims. So, meaning to say, in order for them not to easily uh, detected or even unreadable by the subversive nation or subversive organization, they tend to disseminate false information for the purpose of misleading the enemy and other prospective victims and on the way of confusing the opponents so that is one of the uh, function so by the way the FSB is considered to be the federal law enforcement agency so that it has the same function with the FBI so iron curtain form the imaginary boundary dividing Europe into two separate areas from the end of the World War II in 1945 until the end of the Cold War in 1991. So the term symbolized efforts by the Soviet Union to block itself and its satellite states from open contact with the West and non-Soviet controlled areas. So meaning to say it was a imaginary boundary now we're in the Soviet Union use it to block itself and its satellite states from open contact with the West or the Western countries and of course for the non-Soviet controlled areas of some part of the Europe so we have here the details of the FSB or the Federal Security Service so the the fsb of the russian federation is the principal security agency of russia so and the main successor agency to the ussr's committee of the state security 
So its main responsibilities are within the country and include counterintelligence, internal and labor board and border security, counterterrorism and surveillance, as well as investigating some other types of grave crimes and federal law violations. So in short, the function of the FSB is more on internal security or internal measures. Yun nga lang, the KGB actually uh, was the name before, which is the KGB, now FSB. So the, one of the functions of the KGB really is to have an offensive counter uh, intelligence with the other countries. But under the FSB, still it has a function of the offensive counter intelligence to the other place or country but they are more on the federal security services the current director of the fsb is no other than director alexander bortniko since 2008 the headquarters will be found at moscow russia and the one who founded was boris yeltsin it was founded on april 12 1995 predecessor was the kgb so this was the thing that I'm talking about a while ago and its general nature is federal law enforcement so meaning to say the FSB or the Federal Security Service is more on uh, their function is more on enforcing the federal law or enforcing the federal laws so the KGB this is the definition Komis Siha Gusu Darsi Nuj Bizo Pasnosti or Committed Gusu Darts Ni Vinoy Bizo Pasnosti. So it is concerned on political spinach and propaganda abroad. So and for the control of spinach activities of foreign communist countries. So meaning to say they have also the function. They have also a function in terms of uh, propaganda abroad and control of spionage activities or expedition outside the country. And the other one is Gru Gaglavnoye Razved Yatelnoye Abraved Ine. So it is concerned with political events and economic conditions and also collects information for intelligence purposes all over the world. So the group directs foreign sabotage and maintains network of agents in military and special agents. So meaning to say, the FSB is more on internal security measures. The KGB has a concern with political spinach and propaganda abroad and even control of spinach activities for foreign communist countries while the GRU is more concerned with political events and economic conditions and it also operate direct sabotage abroad. Armtog, which is also under the uh, Soviet, so it was organized for the purpose of purchasing all kinds of materials for the Soviet Union. So Armtog, Armtor, Armtorg was a or is a organized uh, service wherein the sole purpose is for the purchasing of all kinds of materials for the Soviet Union. Smears or death to spies. So it was organized during the war as counterintelligence concerned with disaffection among Soviet troops and anti-communism in any form. So meaning to say, uh, this particular uh, group has been organized for the very purpose of executing those who already turned their backs from their troops or even uh, have lost their appetite to be part of the troop. So they have the five major division, the, the administration, Operation, Investigation, Prosecution, and Personnel. Question. What country is considered as the most reliant or accurate intelligence? What do you think is the answer? Is it A, Great Britain? Is it B, USA? Is it C, Israel? Or is it D, USSR? Your answer? The answer is 
Charlie Israel. Another question. If the Philippines has NICA stands for National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, then Israel has, of course, Mossad. Let's proceed. Mossad. Mossad was formed on December 13, 1949 as the Central Institute for Coordination at the recommendation of Prime Minister. It was David Ben-Gurion who was the Prime Minister during that time and it was transferred to Reuven Shilua as the first director of Mossad. Uh, Mossad literally means the Institute. It is the National Intelligence Agency of the Israel. So, the Mossad is responsible for intelligence collection, covert operations, and counter terrorism. So, meaning to say, uh, intelligence collection it is more on gathering of data and or information, covert operations, meaning to say undercover operation or covert operations, it could be through surveillance, it could be undercover operation, elicitation, uh, or any forms of covert operations, and counter-terrorism. So, counter-terrorism, we back 2010, in the frame of 2010 or 2011, when Osama bin Laden was captured with the help of the Mossad. So the Mossad has two branches. It is Amman and Shabak. Okay. So Amman is a military intelligence as the Israel's defense force. In short, it works externally as the border personnel and or the boundary personnel. The second one is Shabak. Shabak from the word Shinbet means not be seen. So it is more on general security service. So in short, the, its function is more on internal security. So if the Aman is external and Shabak is internal, their equivalent to US is that the Aman is external while in the US that is equivalent to CIA which is external. If the Shabak of Mossad is internal, that is equivalent to the FBI of the US. And if the Aman of Mossad in Israel and CIA of US is external, that is equivalent to MI6 of the Great Britain. Okay? If the Shabak of Mossad under uh, the Israel is internal and the FBI of the US still internal, they're equivalent to the British intelligence is that MI5, which is known to be the military intelligence section 5, responsible for uh, domestic defense or domestic security purposes. Another question, it was founded by Harry S. Truman, which is responsible for collecting signals, intelligence from all over the world, and for overseeing the integrity of American secret communication. Answer, the answer would be National Security Agency. So, moving on, the National Security Agency it is an intelligence organization of United States government. So responsible for global monitoring, collection and processing of information and data for foreign intelligence and counterintelligence purposes. So it is a discipline known as signal intelligence or SIGINT. So many to see the National Security Agency it is more on signal intelligence, responsible for collection of all data and or information through signal. So the NSA or the National Security Intelligence for that matter is concurrently charged with protection of US government communications and information systems against penetration and network warfare. Meaning to say this agency is very responsible for, for protection of all information and all communication in the cyber space. So we back 2001 or the 9-11 attack. 
Okay. So, the 9-11 attack that was initiated by the uh, by the terrorist or the terrorist attack way back that to, uh, way back that year. Now, wherein it is one of the function of the NSA to detect the communication that had been communicated by the terrorist with the use of the uh, signal communication of the United States. But they failed or unable to detect that since there was no proper uh, la uh, there was no proper communication or coordination with the network or with the agency of communication for the reason of providing the information of what has been communicated by the terrorists but that attack actually was uh, undetected they were all unprepared and that was unexpected so that is why uh, bigla ang nangyari yung mga ganong pangyayari we back that year so NSA more charged with the protection of US government communications and information system against the hacking uh, cracking or any form of a cyberspace attack by the terrorist so the national security agency it was founded by harry e. stroman founded on november 4 1952 the parent organization was the united states department of defense or the usd and uh, dod and the headquarters will be found at the maryland maryland united states so what we have here we have here the central intelligence agency okay so the central intelligence agency was a principal for intelligence activities and covert operations abroad so it was founded september 18 1947 sabi dito principal for intelligence activities and covert operations abroad so meaning they are functioning externally Okay, so they conduct covert operations and or intelligence activities outside the U.S. They can initiate operation, operations outside the United States. Question, is the CIA law enforcement agency? The answer is no. The CIA is not a law governing agency, but it is a collecting or information collecting agency. So... This particular agency cannot enforce the law, but they can also only initiate uh, uh, initiate collection of information. The one considered to be the law enforcement enforcement body or the enforcement body for that matter of the U.S. was the FBI because the FBI is actually created pursuant to the Republic Act of uh, particular acts or law of the United States in order to uh, initiate their operation. Like Manu, the CIA or the Central Intelligence Agency had been created as well out of the law. Okay? So, so Rear Admiral Roscoe Helen Cotter was the first director of the Central Intelligence Agency and Jan O'Brien was the current director director but i want you to check on the current director of the central intelligence agency might be the already uh, changed it and it was created under the u.s national security act of 1947 we back in july 26 1947 uh, most of the majority of the provisions of the act took effect on september 18 1947 during this time so the cia most of the provisions of the cia uh, has been found in the u.s national security act of 1947 uh, the national u.s national security act of 1947 is also known as the public law of the national security of the united states so before the cia was named to cia it was named first at, as CIG. So as I've discussed a while ago, 
CSG stands for Central Intelligence Group, established by late President Truman in January 1946. So it is the interim measure that paved the way for the CIA, which the agency is now under the National Security Council. Why the agency is under the National Security Council? Since most of the provisions of the CIA in order for them <clears throat> to operate has been created by this very act, which is the U.S. National Security Act of 1947. Okay, I'd like to appeal as to the current director of the Central Intelligence Agency. From the previous slide that I have discussed, the current director that I have given to you was John O. Brennan. But I'd like to reiterate and to correct the current director of the Central Intelligence Agency. It was Gina Haspel. Gina Haspel was the current director of the CIA way back May 21 of 2018. So he was the current director of the CIA who, who is in the person of Gina Haspel. Our next intelligence agency, we have here DIA. DIA stands for Defense Intelligence Agency. So the DIA provides military intelligence to the Department of Defense. So meaning to say, this intelligence agency is attached to the military or the U.S. military department. So it is an external intelligence service of the United States specializing in defense and military intelligence. So, so Aside from the CIA, because CIA is more on gathering data and our information, eh? though they function externally as well. But in terms of a government agency, it is the DIA or the Defense Intelligence Agency who is attached. Okay? I mean, who is uh, tasked to conduct uh, military intelligence externally. So... It is a component of the Department of Defense or the DOD, so meaning to say it is under the component of the Department of Defense of the U.S. military troops and the United States Intelligence Community or DIC. DIA informs national civilian and defense policymakers about the military intentions and capabilities of foreign governments and non-state actors. That is for the sole purpose of letting them know or even give the updates about their operation. Be reminded that the DID is attached under the component of the Department of Defense and the United States Intelligence Community. Because under the United States Intelligence Community, isa na doon kasali na si FBI, it also includes CIA, uh, the DIA, and of course, the NSA, or the National Security Agency, as what we have discussed a while ago. It also provides intelligence assistance, integration and coordination across uniformed military service intelligence components, which remain structure, structurally separate from the DIA. So, meaning to say, they are not only focusing on the uh, U.S. military troops, but they also... Uh, give data or intelligence to the Air Force and of course the naval forces. <clears throat> the agency's role encompasses the collection and analysis of military related foreign political, economic, industrial, geographic and medical and health intelligence as long as the coverage of the gathering of data and or intelligence is part of their OP mission. Now we are down to our very own intelligence agency, which is the NICA of the Philippines. So, NICA stands for National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, or Pambansang Sangay Para Sa Pagsasamang Kaalaman, or PSPK. So, the previous director of the NICA was retired Gen PNP General Iger P. Untog. And the current director of the NICA, we have here Alex Paul I. Montiagudo. Now, 
uh, the the primary role or the function of the NICA is the is intelligence gathering and analysis arm of the Philippine government in charge of carrying out overt covert and clandestine intelligence programs so meaning to say they are not only in charge of carrying out overt meaning to say openly as to the gathering of data and information but they also initiate covert form of intelligence operation and clandestine in meaning to say patago yung ginagawa nila it might be in the form of spionage it might be in the form of surveillance casing uh, undercover operation elicitation and clandestine operation so the nika's motto is that kaalaman ay kaligtasan or translated into english intelligence is security for the record nika was founded way back in 1949 it was presi late president elpidio carino who created or founded the intelligence agency it was created under the authority of the Executive Order 235 with further powers relating to intelligence work added by a government survey and reorganization commission in 1954. 54. But later on, on September 16, 1972, it was abolished by President by late President Ferdinand E. Marcos under the Executive Order 51 and replaced by the National Intelligence Security Authority or NISA headed by General Fabian Ver. So the original name was NICA but during since it was abolished by Ferdinand A. Marcos it was renamed into NISA or National Intelligence Security Authority. It was renamed then later on right after the first INSA revolution into NICA. It was renamed into NICA, National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, replacing NISA and was merged with the Civil Intelligence and Security Agency when Philippine Constitution was revamped. So, presently, NICA is not working alone but it is close coordinated with the CIA, the Mossad, Secret Intelligence Service, and Intelligence Services of Asian countries to counter the threat of terrorism. So under the Secret Intelligence Service and Intelligence Services of Asian countries, we have this so-called ISHANAPOL, or stands for Association of Southeast Asian Chiefs of Police. CIA, of course, that is in the U.S., Counterintelligence Agency, Mossad. Of course, we ha they have this uh, Aman at Shabak and an another is the Europol as well. So the NICA as other branches of intelligence agency in the Philippines we have also under the RA or the Republic Act 9372 the ATC or the Anti-Terrorism Council. So the Anti-Terrorism Council also one of the council as part of the intelligence organization to provide an information pertaining to the terrorism activity. So the agency is led by the Director General in rank and is assisted by the Deputy Director General in rank. So the former reports directly to the President. Its prison headquarters are located in Quezon City. So meaning to say, when there, whenever there are reports had been gathered by the NICA, it should not be presented or be given directly to the President of the Philippines, but it must be first underwent to the process or re-evaluation of the NIB or the National Intelligence Board. The National Intelligence Board serves as, the, as an advisory board to the Director General before he would submit his findings to the President of the Philippines relating to national security matters affecting the Philippines. So that is the function of the Director General. So meaning to say before the information and or the intelligence be given directly to the President of the Philippines, it must underwent first to the NIB or the National Intelligence Board for the purpose of evaluation and analysis for 
it relates to the national security matters affecting the Philippines. So that's it. This is the end of the part 2. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And hopefully that you've learned uh, about our new topic today. And next meeting or the next presentation that will be posted will be the part 3 of the police intelligence and secret services. So the part 3 topic is all about intelligence and its perspective. So we're going to tackle about the intelligence objective, the importance and the functions of the intelligence, the principles of intelligence. I think there are seven or eight uh, types, uh, I mean principles of intelligence. And also we will be going to discuss the types of intelligence such as combat intelligence, line intelligence, uh, strategic intelligence, order of battle intelligence, so many more types of intelligence. And also we'll be going to tackle about the classification of intelligence and of course evaluation guide. The evaluation guide is very important in the field of intelligence since uh, the information being gathered must underwent uh, evaluation uh, to be done or conducted to be done or conducted by the uh, uh, decision maker. Okay, so for the information and or gather data becomes intelligence. And next is we have interpretation. Right after evaluation of the intelligence, of course, that should be underwent interpretation by the decision maker. Okay? And next is the intelligence cycle. So we are going to determine further the cycle of the intelligence, uh, the first step until the last stage and or step of the cycle of intelligence. So cycle is very important as well as the interpretation and evaluation of the intelligence. So hopefully that you will be able to uh, spare time for the next topic soon that we will be having as to the part 3 presentation. Thank you. Have a great day.